Hi, and welcome to the Bold Leadership Stories Show, where we get to talk with people and their ex and, and listen to their stories about experiences shaping their exceptional lives. And today, I'm tremendously honored to be having some time with a gentleman who lives in my town, Temecula area, and uh, his name is Rob Brown. And Rob brings uh, years of experience as a leadership development pro. I'm going to read a little bit about him here. His experience, he's an experienced and tenacious speaker, coach, author, and leader who's led and developed over 100,000 participants in personal and professional leadership growth trainings, seminars, and programs throughout the U.S. and overseas. Rob's life has been remarkable, filled with failures and success, loss and recovery, and incredible opportunities for growth and awareness. He's failed at business, lost his spouse to illness and his son to gang violence. His gifts will tell you, his gifts, he will tell you, that demanded the best part of him come to life. Boy, I'm sure about that, those tremendous losses. He continues to embrace life and enjoy sustained success in his business endeavors. In all this, he communicates a powerful message that elevates the human spirit and instills hope in others that they may finally live the lives of passion, their lives of passion and purpose. Rob has learned from some of the best on how to lead his field and has turned much of his energy to supporting, teaching, and mentoring others in leading in today's diverse cultures. He's a regular speak, speaker at conferences and organizations, <laughs> and different associations, and uh, Rob currently resides in Southern California with his incredible wife, Linda, their three sons, and their first granddaughter, Fiona. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. I just got, uh, we just had our, I just got, I, it's, like, it's like mine. I just got my first <laughs> granddaughter. <laughs> wow, what an experience. Big deal. Yeah, it is big a big deal. big deal. Yeah. So what's going on with Rob now? What's, what's the latest and greatest in your life, Rob? Well, you know, um, uh, ever evolving, ever evolving. And, and Jim, first of all, I appreciate being here. I love doing this. Um, I have a hard here. time. I have a hard time sometimes hearing about me, um, <laughs> but it's all good. It's all good. Um, uh, life's wonderfully busy uh, with my career. Um, we actually launched a second business here locally, so that that's going really well. Yeah, and what's that? Um, it's that? a, it's a absolutely uh, Mr. Electric of Marietta. It's an electric uh, residential electric service franchise. Okay. Yep. Yeah. So we, we have really just launched and in all of this, it's all a byproduct of continuing. And you and I talked a little bit earlier of doing the self work, continually evolving, continue to look where I can sharpen my edge, continue to look where, you know, where, if you will, my Achilles heels, whatever is, is harming me, learning new behaviors, uh, replacing that, paying attention to things that I didn't pay attention to even a decade ago that, um, that are, you know, helping me to give more energy and maintain my health and, mm -hmm. and all of that. So, yeah, so, you look great, by the way, I'd like to get some of your secrets. Mm -hmm. uh, well, I, I feel great. I really do. And, and, but it, it is all, it's all, it's all a byproduct of paying attention, um, being willing to admit when I'm, when I'm doing things that are not, not serving me well and questioning uh -huh. and, um, and then, and then taking the necessary action. You, you and I talked about that before we got here, you were talking about taking action, doing things differently. And, um, and I think honestly, um, I think that's where it's at in whatever our endeavor is doing the things to take care of ourselves personally. And that fuels everything that I do, everything. Yeah. I I'm finding that too. I, you know, like we talked about, it's, it's like, that's now number one priority. If my entity, my body isn't capable of performing, I'm useless. Right. And that, that includes right. my, my mind and my body. Right. So, yep. and, so, and the only time I pushed my body so hard that it failed and basically it filed divorce papers on me. So I was, 
you know, at a point where I needed to make some decisions and that, that it's, it's all come around again. And that what your point is, is that becoming aspect. I'd forgotten yes. all about that. And I yes. wasn't listening to my body. I was yes. gaining weight. I was, I was just falling down further and further and further behind. And, um, and finally, it just I had to I hit I hit rock bottom and had to pull the brick cord on everything, and stop everything and start over. And it's been mm-hmm. a, it's been a climb. So help me understand how somebody can do that on an ongoing basis. They've got you know they're they're married for ten years. They've got three kids. They've got a house. They've got a car. They got vacations. They got credit cards. They're they're traveling and busy, busy, busy doing all kinds of stuff in life. And yep. how do they manage to Keep all that in balance and keep their body in, in shape and their mind in shape. Well, if they're not intentional about it, they won't. They won't. They won't keep it in balance. Something will have to give. Um, and that's honestly, and, and not that, not that I hit. Um, I probably hit my lowest points with those losses you talked about earlier, and and they 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 nudged me in in huge ways to you know really examine my life and so it's really been a process moving along but as i've moved along what i've what i've really really gro- grown to realize is that everything that i do it's got to be in alignment absolutely everything and in so many ways some of those things that happened to me earlier in in my life as a as a you know a somewhat younger man then that gave me opportunity to put things in right perspective where I could easily have gone along and made damn sure that treadmill that we get caught on was more important than my family, than my health, than my fill in the blank, my social engagement, whatever that is. Um, You know, in our collective culture right here, we, we hold in high regard titles, authority over, Mm-hmm. money, uh, possessions, all that shit that, that, that really has no real value. And we, we can lose ourselves in that. And, you know, you had an experience in life that whatever the experience was, it woke you up to something more important than. So that's definitely happened in my life. And, you know, I was talking with a friend this morning. He talked about how the position he's in right now He's got less of a title, less responsibility, less stress. He's able to like the, the money is pretty Mm -hmm. comparable. And he goes, I've actually got like a personal life where my phone never rings when I'm with my family or I'm taking time away. And he said, huge win. And he says, I had to work through getting past, you know, holding high title and power real or perceived. Right. to doing that, but then realizing, and, you know, um, I would like to say that it comes with age, but I've also encountered some young people that are dialing that stuff in now. Mm-hmm. And I love it. And I mean, they're, they're dialing in now those important things, which is my physical energy, my emotional, mental, spiritual, physical self, that if I don't take care of that, I don't have as much juice for all that other stuff that I'm trying to create and things I'm trying to do out there. So, I think that that the way people do that is they have got to get intentional about self. I've been teaching this in front of classes for years. If I don't take care of me first, I'm no good for you. I got nothing left. Now, I might be able to power through it, but I do that. And if I spend it all here, just trying to show up in a way here, I go home to part two of my life. I got nothing for my family. And that's where we end up losing. So we have got to get intentional about taking care of ourselves. And I know there's a ton of programs out there, but it doesn't have to be complicated. Take a look at how I'm eating. Am I really hungry? Is my body doing the best that it co- could be with what I'm putting in and how I'm eating? You alluded to that earlier. Intermittent fasting is a real thing and that science backs it up. Am I getting enough sleep? Am I getting enough love in my life with my family and and my community? Am I doing all of that? Am I connected to purpose? And and all those things right there that if I'm if I'm intentional about that, all the other stuff's 
possible. All the other stuff will, will happen as long as I'm, you know, taking action and, um, you know, nothing happens without good hard work and, and doing the right work and all of that, but being intentional about self-care, I think that is, that that's what makes everything possible. Opening this new business, that makes it possible. You know, someone says, Rob, you got the energy for that? Cause I turned a little bit older this year. I go, yeah, I do. <laughs> yeah. I'm good. I'm yeah, that good. doesn't stop. It's like you can't, <laughs> can't pull a plug on that one, unfortunately. Nope, 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 nope. But what we can do is is um, is respond to it in a really good way. I'm never going to be as strong as I was when I was younger, um, but I can still put the work in to, and it didn't have to be crazy work, but still moving my body. Um, still doing uh you know doing all the things that keep me sharp like all those things right there but again that's all self-care intentional self-care yeah that's great well it's sort of show, showing in your life you're you're eating your own dog food as they say so that's mm. good. yeah I see so yeah which which and wouldn't that... That are overweight and they, you can see they're on their last legs they're like <laughs> yeah and they, they're not living that, that life and you are so what's your secret how do you how do you maintain all that you're traveling all over the world and talking to people everywhere and yeah you know, getting your uh your business helping people coaching people speaking yep busy life how are you yep. doing all that um well uh one is i love what i do and that is that has got to probably be the most important thing. And it doesn't mean I love every aspect of what I do. There's some unfun stuff. I got an email right before you and I got on the call. I've got a bank that needs me to come up with a bunch of damn documents. I hate doing crap like that. Right. <laughs> so, but, but yeah, all of that is, it's, it's all the you know, stuff we got to do and I figure yeah. out ways to do it or if I can leverage and, and, and delegate it. But, but, but it, it's not the, the primary of what I'm doing all day long. Um, I love what I do. And, um, and, you know, when you said something earlier, you alluded to, um, I also, it, it's also important that when I'm out there, um, you know, I had a speaking gig um, earlier last week and I, a lot of young people, a lot of mm -hmm. young, young, young people out there. You now, young people, it, are they like in their forties? Uh, no, no. I mean, <laughs> young people, young okay. people, twenties <laughs> and thirties. Yeah. Twenties and thirties. So, so one, it's real important that I be myself. I'm not there. So I don't have to be like them, act like them, even use their language. Other than when I'm doing it pers purposefully, when I know something about them, their generation, you know, my sons are in that, that age group. Right. So, so I'm able to relate. But the thing that, that I was so conscious of is that I had better be, and you said this earlier, sort of becoming every damn thing I'm talking about, otherwise I'm full of shit and they will sense it and they will know it. Well, they'll and so, it too. It's you like, bet they will. Bam, and you're, and your as, whole thing just crumbles. As they ought to. Yeah. And they might not be, they might not be verbal about it, but it'll show up in their body language. It'll show up in their, suddenly they disengage, you know, he's talking a good game, but it's pretty obvious, right? So, so that that's probably and but that but that connects with I love what it is that I'm doing. And mm -hmm. if I'm going to continue to do what I'm doing, I have got to continue to be in integrity with myself and everything that comes out of my mouth. So when I'm coaching my clients, there's nothing coming out here that I'm either not striving to work on myself where there's awareness and I'm doing something about or I figured some things out. And not mm -hmm. that I've mastered everything. I'm, I'm like everybody else. I'm still trying to figure some things out. But if I'm, if I'm, you know, putting blinders on or I'm staying unconscious, I'm out of integrity and, and it will show up. So one of the things when you ask what my secret is, I'll tell you what, I do actually have a secret. And it's not that I came up with it, but I'm, I'm listening to someone every morning yakking at me about how they have figured some things out some guys and gals out there that have mastered stuff in their life. And I'm, and I'm drawing from them. You're, you're continuing to learn and be open to new and completely new, new neurons in your completely. brain, new, new connections. Well, and Jim, one of the things that I figured out was that I'm not a disciplined person. 
I suck at discipline. And then when I started like checking in with my friends and colleagues and people that I know that go, oh yeah, me too. Oh yeah, me too. And then I'm going, maybe we all just suck at it. Maybe there's a few people that are just wired to stay disciplined, but then there's the rest of us. Yeah. Like when I think of um, uh, David Goggins, like he is wow. one of the most disciplined cats. I don't know if you know who he is. I've um, heard his name, yeah. Yeah, David, um, watch a couple of YouTube videos. You'll, if you're, if you're, um, I fell in love with him when I first heard him. But this is a guy that is so disciplined. He's got his mind set and there's nothing I could do or the world could do that would deviate. And he's got a great story. He didn't grow up with that. He, he, he had a really, really tough life. And um, he was 300 pounds working as a pest control dude. And that's not easy work at 300, at, at, you know, 170 oh, pounds. I hear you. And, and, but something, but something clicked for him. So I see him as a disciplined dude and everything he talks about, he's very real. The rest of us are just not. And so that was bothering me because I couldn't stay on a regular eating routine, a regular sleep routine, a regular exercise routine. I'd have my stretches, but then something would happen and derail me and man, to get back to it. And so what I've learned and has become a real secret for me, not that I keep from anybody else, but it's the magic for me. It's learning. And I, and I heard a word the other day that really is creating prompts that, that automatically create action so like algorithms, prompts, prompts that lead to an action. PTS. PRO and PTS. Yeah. Prompts that lead to an action. Um, if this, then that that's algorithms. That's how, you know, the, the, you know, unmanned car, right? So the driverless car, it operates on algorithms. If something right. comes within six inches of, of this bumper right here, the, if this, then we slow down or we accelerate, whatever that is. Right. So, and I've been listening to some authors around just that. And you're saying to so, have those alg algorithms set up in your brain? It's not that they're set up in my brain. They're very real, which is the cool thing is anybody can do it. I want very badly to have a successful energetic day. And I know that that begins with me having a very, very succinct AM regimen. The only way okay. that happens is making sure that I've got a very, very succinct PM regimen. So that my, um, uh, Brian Johnson calls it the AM PM bookends. My morning is dictated by my evening. And my sleep is dictated by my evening. And how I wake up rested is dictated by how I slept that night. It all flows. It all flows. And then my productivity during the day is based on, did I follow my morning regimen? And so what I've built in, and the thing is, when I leave it to decision, I don't always make the best choice. Okay. When I leave it to decision, workout looks hard. It's cold. It was in the 20s this morning. I can't be doing that, right? But I, but so I left a decision, man, I love comfort like everybody else does. Left a decision, I love an apple fritter just like everybody else does. So I just remove all of that and I'm learning this. So what happens is when my alarm goes off in the morning, it's in the other room, by the way, I have to get up out of bed to go turn it off. And that's either discipline or just sheer stupidity. I don't, I don't, <laughs> But it works, it's, right? it works for it's you. not discipline. It's an algorithm that's built in. What it says okay. is when that alarm goes off, I get up and I go turn it off. I look over at my coffee maker and I have a two-step process. I brew espresso in my espresso machine and then I go to my coffee maker, add a little bit of water to it to make my own Americano. My, my, my machine's already turned on. That cues me. By the way, my clothes, my workout clothes, are right where I need to pick them up by my alarm. Uh -huh. My alarm goes off. My workout clothes go on. I see that my coffee's lit up over there. I go to my espresso machine, which was loaded the night before. I turn the button on, and I've got about two minutes now before that's going to be ready to go so I can go ahead and do that. So and then, uh, there's no decisions anymore. It's just like you, you just – everything just flows. You just go. Taking them all out. <laughs> <laughs> because because left to left to decision this morning was cold yes, it, it was it was i think we had 28 degrees last night yeah, so it's yeah, about 30 on the windshield everything is like yeah what? What? so 
So my garage where I have my gym set up, where I go there, I have a sauna that I turn on every morning. It's an infrared sauna. Uh-huh. So I turn that thing on, and it gives me a temperature in the garage. Temperature was 41 degrees in the garage. Woo. That's what I'm going to be working out in. But if I were, if I didn't have all of these in place, I'd look at 41 degrees and go, hell no, <laughs> not a chance. I, yeah. But I remove that because all of this needs to happen by a certain time in the morning. So the sauna goes on. I do my workout and I've got a, I've got a regimented workout. And by the way, I don't try to lift 150 pounds. I, I, my dumbbells go up to 25 pounds. That's it. I have resistance bands. I got a nice routine that, that gets my heart going by working on my core every day. And I do all of that. I move into my sauna. Um, that's set for going in there for 20 minutes. And then from there, then I move on to my day. But before those things happen, I sat down and meditated. I sat down and journaled and all that happened before I went and worked out. So the point being that morning's laid out every morning and I don't do it so that I can get in good health. I don't do it so that, um, there, it, what I'm doing is I'm, I'm doing it for everything else. I know the success in my business is dependent on me having that morning regimen. Mm-hmm. I know my success with my relationship with my wife and my kids and having the energy for them is dependent on me doing that. Mm-hmm. I made some life choices about eliminating some things from my life. I eliminated drinking. And I was one of those that I enjoyed it. I enjoyed the social element of it. But everything that I read and I was monitoring my body, I was mo- looking at my heart rate throughout the night. Alcohol was killing it. Mm-hmm. Alcohol was, was on average 15 to 20 heartbeats a minute faster on an evening when I drank. That's a big deal over, you know, 10, 20 years. It really makes Absolutely. a difference on your stress. Now, does that mean I'll never drink again? No. But what I will do is it's no longer a daily routine. Yeah. And so now my resting heart rate, when I wake up in the morning, when I look at it, it's anywhere from 43 to 47. And that feels good. So, so then when I, when, so making those decisions, everything that I'm doing allows me to show up fully in everything I'm doing. When I'm showing up with you, I've been up since five and I've had, we launched this morning. So my electrician's out there for his first day. It was day one and there was a couple hiccups. So I went and run to get some supplies for him and we just getting in all the details, but we got it all there. And, you know, I'm watching my clock, making sure I can get home by around 12, 15, so I can just decompress a little bit, but still have the energy so we can have this conversation. And mm-hmm. I attribute all of that to, to committing myself to this, this victory in the morning and my victory in the evening and getting a good night's sleep that I'm just doing every day. So oh, the fantastic. secret, if you will, is, is having mercy on myself and my willpower, which we have a finite amount of, and, and moving myself out of that and moving into, and it doesn't mean I don't feel things. It doesn't mean, you know, trust me, when I was in the garage this morning, I went to start, it was like, oh man, my muscles were screaming, like it's cold out here. And, but, but we did <laughs> but it, we but we did it because, <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Um, but, but, getting through that it's such a feel-good feel you know about that you know when you when and and i know what i feel like if when i was using decision to or not to do that workout i was pissed off at myself all day long for passing on my workout right i I was just aware of it and it's like and i knew it integrity uh you know just staying in that integrity yeah great if you when you stay there it just adds compounds it's like putting another you know a thousand dollars in the bank hundred percent and that compound and that's the that's the important thing with nothing i do is crazy nothing's crazy it's just a little bit every single day but what i know is i build on that and if i can use the analogy of my higher self the best version of myself Every day when I'm doing that, I'm closing that gap with who I'm showing up with today and who I could be. And I know that it's as simple as making damn sure when the alarm goes off at five o'clock, don't go back to bed. Yeah. Don't, don't go, I'll get another hour. No, you're up already. Get dressed, get your coffee, move on. And every time I do that, I get closer. 
I get closer. I get closer. And I know I'm never going to ring the bell fully, but, but every day I know I'm, I'm getting closer and I feel better about myself and everything that I do, I show up that way. Awesome. So on the other side of that coin, I know, at least for me, I, I kind of have the same structure now and I have, I'm learning ways to deal with the, you know, sometimes I just, I'm not in integrity for whatever mm. reason. And how do, how do you manage that on a daily basis to keep that energy up to want us to keep striving for that? So uh, I like everybody. Become, uh, uh, like, like it doesn't become stressful for you. How do you stay? Right. Up? Right. Um, you know, there was a time in my life where I had put myself through so much stress and I had avoided seeing a doctor. And we're, we're talking about some years had gone by. And I was certain that when I got to the doctor, he was going to tell me, you broke yourself. <laughs> yeah. You are broken. I didn't have any physical symptoms outside, but what I put myself through with self-doubt, with critical, critical self-assessment, being down on myself for not following through and doing the things that I knew I was supposed to do, but I wasn't doing it again, letting fear paralyze me, you know, to do the things I knew I needed to do, but I was just fucking scared. And I, and what I, what I did to myself, nobody else had to say shit to me, but what I did to myself, I put myself through hell. So one, I was grateful that I didn't break myself but I also knew that, it, that I had the capacity to do that, especially as I aged, that I, would, I could end up killing myself. So what I've, what I've grown to, to learn to do, one is to be far, far more compassionate with myself. The same kind of compassion I have for my little five-year-old granddaughter. I'm kind of pointing that way because she's at her house today. Um, the way I would treat her. And, I, and, and there's... There's nothing that I wouldn't do for her that I'm now learning that I wouldn't do for myself. Wait a minute. So, so let me make sure I understand that. That's a key point, I think, for me. I thank you for sharing that. Because you're what I have a new granddaughter, so and I, I I'm I'm experiencing that empathy and it's an amazing feeling. But you're saying apply that feeling to yourself. Yeah. How do you do that? Part of what I do as I remember, I remember who I was as that little five-year-old, little 10-year-old boy who never felt good about himself, didn't have someone like me loving on him, uh -huh. that, which is, that most which is most of us, that grew to learn um, how to be in self-shame, um, how mm -hmm. to, and, and because I didn't have I didn't have someone like that to remind me of what the truth was. And then I get to school and kids will be kids. That was reinforced. So I learned how to really insulate and isolate myself because the world was, was not nice. Mm -hmm. And, and so remembering who I was through all of that and that, and if you will, that part of me still resides and what that part of me always needed and always wanted was just a hug just to be told you are lovable and you know and I and what I know was I know I was a sweet boy I really was I was like this really gentle spirit I was a sweet boy that if anyone had just seen him they would have got like you know scooped him up but but they weren't there and so remembering that and it, it wasn't just, it wasn't an epiphany. I've done work, Jim. I've done work on all of this. I've gone to the darkest fucking places there are and felt every bit of that and felt me ultimately being the only one now that was crushing me. Only one, the only one left over. And when I can realize, and anybody can do this, when I can realize I'm the only one now hurting me, I'm the only one now who can hurt me, and to just flip that one, because when I think about who I was as a boy and who I was as a young man without all that guidance, I'm going, man, look what you did in spite of like what you didn't get and just the terror I was in. 
but still went through it and still overcame it and still got to. And that doesn't mean that where I sit right now, I've got anything on anybody or I see myself as a higher than or anything. But what I've learned to do is really, truly love who I am. Mm. I was talking my, with my pastor friend the other day, a great friend, Eric, here locally. We were talking about something. And he's like, man, I, I like how you turned out. I go, me too, man. He goes, so anyone trying to tell you to change yourself? I go, man, I have people wanting me to change all the time, right? Because I, and you know, this when I, something, I rub them the wrong way or, or I challenge somebody and they take exception to it and whatever it is. Uh, my little granddaughter, she was saying that someone called her rude. I asked her, I said, are you a rude person? She says, no. And I go, well, don't worry about that then. I go, they might've interpreted what you did that may have caused him to feel something. So, and I go, your Jeep popper gets called rude often enough. And I go, I'm not a rude person. <laughs> it's kind of a badge of honor. It kind of is. And there's no, there's no bad intent. There's no harm. I'm not trying to push buttons out there. But you're, what I, you're, what you're I, changing, you're, you're, you're adding in the mix with your being, your energy. You're, you're pulling in yep. something that's different than a, what's, they're feeling and it's, yeah. it's they're it's giving them pause it's giving them a pattern interrupt of what their life is all about and they're recognizing it and they're saying hey yep. that's different and they're and they're confronting you with it and it but for me it's just like it's almost like they're asking you why are you different on some level yeah on some level and not better or special just a little different that's yeah. all it is yeah. And, and there's, there's great power in that. And to answer your question, Jim, that, that, that you originated with is, is I, I reside in that. I'm not perfect, man. I still screw shit up. Mm -hmm. I really do. Mm -hmm. I still make a promise and, and end up not keeping it. And I was like, God damn it. Right. And I'm, and I, and I go, all right. So what, what happened that you didn't follow through on that? You, you overload yourself with too damn many things to do. And then that didn't happen. Now you need to go clean that one up and and own your stuff on that one uh, you know i didn't make you important enough i booked too damn many things i got overwhelmed i thought i could do it and i blew it and and i'm gonna i'm gonna do better next time like i'm gonna i'm gonna keep be mindful of that and make damn sure that as i'm booking things in my calendar i don't get stupid about it and try to try to do too many things and you know make sure i allow some time and space so so i i'm i'm far from perfect i'm far from figuring it all out uh, I, but I have so much more grace with myself and, and I think that's really the, the key piece right there, but, but not to the point where I let myself off the hook. I, I don't, I, I still hold myself to a certain place. Um, and, and sometimes it means some sacrifice and sometimes it means I don't all the way get my way because I made a promise or, or a commitment to do something. And I make sure to follow through on that. And, and then I just have to reevaluate. Did I take on too much? And do I need to, do I need to adjust something right there? Mm -hmm. But it doesn't make sense for me anymore to get down on myself. It just doesn't look myself in the mirror, be honest with myself and then do something different about it. Because I'm not, a, I know I'm not a bad person. I know I don't intentionally uh, seek to cause harm. I don't intention to, to do anything against anybody else. I'm the first one to think about how you're going to feel about it before I do. I just do. But I also don't leave myself out in the cold any longer. So I do consider myself, but I'm, but I'm not ever going to do anything. So, so when, when I don't show up my best version, that's, that's an opportunity. I get to learn more about myself and learn to see what I've, what I've got to do differently. The thing that catches me more than anything is I am not the most organized dude. And so I can let disorganization really mess with, you know, my, my, how I show up. Now, other people would look at that go, he looks like he's got his deal all together. I make sure I show up early, you know, I'm, uh, all that sort of stuff right there. But man, what I put myself through, cause I was trying to find something cause I, I, I didn't organize things. So I'm learning to build certain tools and sometimes full on delegate certain things that I'm just, that are just not my high point and just learn that, you know, I, I can't do it all, but where I, where I am responsible, I got to show up and I've, and I've got to learn how to do it differently. Mm -hmm. So, um, just that. So I, I know that's it. That's an Achilles heel for me and left unchecked. It could, it could cause real havoc in my life and certainly stress. And, and I've learned, and you know this one, you know what high stress is. It does not feel good. Um, 
especially mm -hmm. self and self induced stress does not feel good. That's why I, that's why I'm never late anywhere. I literally am never late anywhere because I leave plenty early because I can't stand the stress of watching my GPS like counting like holy shit. I'm like only oh, got 15 minutes window now, only 10 minutes, only five. I can't stand that. So I don't. I make sure never to put myself in those positions. There you go. Yeah. So you we had talked about you had a you were at an event and you were speaking with some younger folks. Yeah. Were you able to impart some of this amazing life experience for them? And and if so, how are they accepting of it? I, I got them to tell me. Okay. And so, so when I, when I'm with an audience, I love engaging. So I, what I did was I, I had them help me to frame it. Like, you know, cause one of the things I talked about, one of the reasons why we don't strive for this bigger version of ourselves is somewhere along the way we get scared. We get scared of, you know, I can say for myself, you know, fear of what if it doesn't happen? Um, I read this great, great quote. I won't build, I'll just paraphrase it, but basically it said, freedom is on the breeze in the sky and then the the voice says oh but what if i fall and then the other voice says oh but what if you fly so <laughs> that so that so that possibility that and that's what i strive for constantly but some of our younger people they're not even getting in the clouds they're staying on the ground because they are afraid and i let them tell me they're afraid i'm going what are you afraid of and they started telling me what they're afraid of and so that's where I was able to then frame everything we talked about after that around their legitimate fears in their world. And so I was bring, able to bring in some, you know, um, um, recognized pop culture that they can recognize and relate to as a, okay. as a, to be able to, you know, um, make the point that I was making. And, and the piece that I was really trying to make, get them for in the, in the very end of all of this is that everything, everything, everything they want in life is on them 100%, the choices that they're making today. And, and so, and it, and it wasn't a lecture. It wasn't it sounded like a, a parent or a grandparent, you know, looking now, all you got to do is, you know, make up your own goddamn decisions. Yeah. That's not you. And it, and it, I don't want to hear that. No, but they were able to, to capture that and and, um, and 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 help them to feel really empowered. And I and part of what I know is afterwards, then it's like, hey, like I'm going through this, and hey, what about this? And it's like that I love. And so there was there was regular engagement following that. And and you know, like I said, I don't try to be their age, but I also I also on some level don't see the difference on some level. Um, yeah, I know my body's a little older, but my mind and my heart, they don't feel that. And so, you know, they're, they're energetic and they're energized. I'm working with a company right now. I see them once a week and they're all twenties and thirties and they're all really bright. Like they're, they're a land developing company. So these are, mm -hmm. these are just, these are analyticals and they're super, super smart. And man, when I bring stuff in there, they're going, yeah, but what about this? I'm going, great question. Let's talk about that. And we dive into that. And it's amazing what they're getting from this for themselves. Just amazing. And oh, it's just, okay. it's being real, a degree of fearlessness. I mean, I'm, I'm here. Doesn't mean I know everything, but I, I've definitely figured some things out and I bring some things and I learn from them every time too. So, so, you know, like you talked about earlier, I, I continue to open myself up and, and, it doesn't need to be my generation speaking to me. I'm, I'm listening to younger people that have figured some really cool things out. Yeah. And if I can benefit from it and pass it along, I'm, I'm all in, man. Beautiful. Well, that's, that's, it brings it just like for me now, it's all about how much joy my, my whole purpose is to experience joy and have gratitude and appreciation for what I've got, you know, this life that I've been given. And the right experience on. that I have, and it's it's not about money. It's about bringing joy to myself and to you know the world around me. And how the better I am at doing that every day, the more success I have. And, mm -hmm. uh, and it sounds like you're on the same page. It's just like, right on. Yeah, really cool. So, um, excellent, great stories. Thank you for sharing. Um, I have one more question. We got a little time. I'm in a little late. 
Oop, did I lose you? Are you? Did we freeze a little bit right there? Yeah, you froze a little bit. Are do we? You got a little more time? Time for one more question? Yes, this is actually perfect timing. Yeah, I got it. I got it two o'clock, so it's perfect. Okay, good. Uh, yeah. So I want to ask you, what was at some point in your life? I know at different points of your life, you've had to make decisions. Mm. What was the boldest decision you've made? Mm. And what were the, you know, what was the consequence of that decision? You know, uh, here's how I'm going to answer it. And it may not be what you expect. But okay. there really is a de there really is a decision in this. Not expecting anything. I'm just wondering fair enough. Fair how, enough. How you're going to respond to this? Because it's not so, an easy question. So, um, I had I was a I was a leader in an organization called the Mankind Project, and mm -hmm. we we led experiential trainings for men, and so I was one of the leaders, and the leaders are held to a pretty high standard, mm -hmm. you know, as far as our commitments and being on time and being committed and showing up for the other men. We'd have a staff of around 30, anywhere from 25 to 30 men actually went through the training. So it's, it's, you know, a real safe environment. And on this particular training, and I'd, I'd been leading these trainings at that point for nearly 10 years. And I had made a decision to leave the training early because I had another engagement that I had to go to that was going to force me to have to get on a plane to make sure that I was there for Monday morning. Okay. And I announced, and I announced to them Thursday night, I didn't let them know well in advance. I announced to everybody Thursday night, by the way, I'll be leaving the training early. And what ended up happening was I got my ass completely handed to me. <laughs> okay. The men I, I made the decision. Funny, it's like, yeah. No, no, it's all good. It's all good. The men made the decision. They weren't willing to follow me that weekend and follow my lead that weekend because I had, I had basically broken an agreement. Right. And then I didn't, and I, and I, and I didn't respect them enough to let everyone know well in advance, allow people to talk about it, maybe even get a replacement for me on the weekend, you know, because I, I wasn't going to be able to fully commit or make another decision about you know, that other engagement. And I, what I ended up doing and, and, and this, it really was a weekend long thing where I, I felt humility, shame, self doubt, everything that could go into that. I did call, changed my airline. You know, I fly, I ended up having to take a, you know, a 10 o'clock flight that night. And, and the next couple of days weren't real easy as a result of that. But what ended up happening was I made the decision to stop leading trainings at that point right there. And it wasn't, I'm going to go run away because of what happened to me. It was, they deserve better. And I'm not, I'm, I haven't figured some things out about leadership and the responsibility of leadership to show up here fully for them that mm -hmm. I couldn't see that myself. They had to, they had to teach that one to me. And so what I did was I worked with a mentor. We worked for a couple of years and I, during that time, and what I realized was that I was still operate, operating under, yeah, I talked about that, that boy in me. Mm. I was still operating as that terrified boy under his very, very abusive dad. Mm. And my fear was, I'm oversimplifying, my fear was if I tell the men in advance, they're going to be pissed off, they're going to something, something. And so, so realizing that was the work I needed to do. My dad's name was Bob, and he's since left the planet. But I, during the work, I put Bob to rest. I mean, fully to rest. And that, that continued decision was that I was not ever going to let, let him or another man supplant him 
in my dealings, whether it's business dealings or a training dealings or whatever that is. Mm. Um, that doesn't mean that I don't still feel fear, but it's, it's not that, it's not that, that little boy terrorized fear. And so that decision to pull away from that and everything that it might have meant to others and, and just trusting that this is what I needed to do to grow up some more, to learn some more, to develop some more, to, to, to discover myself some more. That was, that to me was a, was a bold decision because there was comfort in staying in that and getting to continue to be revered as one of the certified leaders and all the things that came with that. You know, I'd get private rooms and all kinds of shit, you know, because I held that status and to, to walk away from all of that, to get myself right, um, was, to me, one of the boldest things I've done and, and one of the best things I ever did for myself. Excellent. How was that? That was beautiful. Thank you for sharing. That's tough. Yeah. That, there's, there's a lot of learning there and humility yeah. and, and pride and um, just being in integrity, like we are talking about with yourself yeah. and holding yeah. that standard. Um, you know, here you are leading to, you know, admittedly a very high standard group, um, a very high, high functional group as being someone of integrity. And you felt inside that you weren't being that, that person. I clearly wasn't. I clearly wasn't. And the chasm here was, was way too large, Yeah. way so too you, large, who I could be and who I was showing up as. Yeah. So you made, you decided then that you needed to make some changes and um, yeah. separated yourself from that, you know, that experience. And yeah, I, I kind of dethroned you know, myself. Painful. Yeah. Yeah. So that, um, that takes a lot, it takes a lot of heart. But, but here's, here's the bottom line, Jim, and this is, is for everybody that'll be watching, listening to this. Um, we've all got this one time on the planet and we've got about this much left whatever right. that is yeah um i know that if the gods allow me to live to a long full life and i look back and i know that i didn't go for it i'm gonna be pissed i'm just yeah. gonna be pissed off yeah I'm so, that way too. It's like so that's that's why i think about every morning if i if i choose not to work out i'm going you're gonna be pissed off at yourself <laughs> when you're 92 years old, looking back, you're going, you were such a goddamn baby. No it was 40, it was 41 degrees out. And like, what's your problem? I think about that. And I, and I think about, you know, ultimately my death and will, will it have, when we, when we all look back, did I live a full on life that I don't get to do over again? I don't get another shot at it's it. And I think we forget about that. And so all those things, they all lead to that same thing, knowing that when I get that opportunity to look back, or I look at my granddaughter, or I look at my wife, I look at our sons, I know that I, I lived full on, that I was, I was complete with myself. And you know what they say, all warts and all, right? All that stuff. But I was complete and I was true, and I, and I, and I, I did not ever settle. And, I, and I'm telling you, I got nothing on anybody, Jim. Just right mindset. That's it. Uh, it's beautiful. And yeah, uh, this is very, very fun today. Thank you for your time. This was fun for me too. Wrap cool. it up here. But yeah, it was just really, yes. really fun speaking with you today. And great session. So I'm, I'm looking Good. forward to sharing it. Good. Uh, with that, Good. we'll stop the recording. You had a question? No, no. I want to just, I want to say thank you for your time and energy with this right here. Um, I hope that is worthwhile what what i shared right there that'll be valuable for your audience i hope it's in alignment with what you're wanting to share with your folks out there yeah i i hope that that hit the mark so we didn't talk about business or anything no that's not my opinion. nope that's all good yeah, yeah. not no you can go on and talk you want to learn something about business you can go to youtube or whatever you know yeah but <laughs> you don't yeah. get this anywhere else this is and so thank you very much beautiful right on right beautiful. on cool so, Jim, I do have a, a call in two minutes right here. Um, nothing I need to prepare for, but it's another another uh, person yeah. who's trying to help me get my business up and going here. So um, I appreciate this time. Anything that I can do in support of what you're trying to do there, 
think about that. Let me know. I'm I'm all in with with what you're what you're doing as you're trying to build that up and Thank you. anything at all I can do to support you. Let me know. Awesome.